Hi everybody, this is Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com with the new Apple MacBook Air. This is the 13.3 inch model with the 1.86 GHz Intel Core 2 Dual Processor, 4 GB of RAM, and 128 GB SSD drive. I'm really excited to show it to you, so I hope you enjoy hearing about it. Why this, this is probably one of the best notebooks I've ever owned. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. As I said, this is going to mainly be a hardware review. And the question that we're asking is, is this a good computer for someone who has got a Windows-based background to get into the Mac? Um, and, and I think that the short answer at the beginning here is yes, it is. One of the things I noticed very first, right out of the box, obviously is how the size of it. It's so thin. You know, that's just a, amazing how thin it is. Um, it almost disappears when you're in the profile. Um, but also the, the other thing that I've noticed right out of the box, of course, was the um, the display on it. It's just a, a beautiful display. It has such a high resolution, 1920 uh, resolution on it. And so text is extremely crisp, easy to read, even though it, it's very small sometimes. You can go into the software and make it bigger into the, the operating system. Uh, other thing is that right out of the box, my problem was battery life. It was advertised at seven hours. I was getting two to three, but I found that sometimes you have to calibrate the battery on these, and the way you do that is, of course, you charge it all the way up until the charging connector. And by the way, if uh, you're like me and you've never seen one of these, incredibly thin cable, and then the connector on it is so small. When you charge it up, there'll be a little light right there. You wait for that light to actually turn green. Don't go by the uh, percentage or the uh, battery indicator in the operating system. Go by the, the physical indicator, the light. And when you that shows a full charge, then use it for two hours. I set my iPhone um, timer to count down two hours. And after that two hours, then I unplugged it. I cranked up the brightness as high as I could get it. I turned on Bluetooth, I turned on Wi-Fi, I began watching videos and drain that battery as fast as you can. It only took me about three and a half hours at that point to drain the battery. Then after you've drained the battery um, it says to leave it for about five hours. Uh, some, some websites said that that five hour wasn't necessary. Five hours was not necessary but uh, Apple said it was so that's what I did. And then after that five hours then plug it in and charge it all the way up again. And after I did that, since then, I've been getting uh, at the lowest five and a half to six hours. At the highest, I think I've gotten six and a half to seven hours of battery life. So the battery is great, which is very nice. Now since I've been using it, one of the things at first I was struggling with was the keyboard. Not because of the quality of the keyboard, but as a Windows person, I'm used to all the shortcuts and keys that I've had on a Windows system. Page down, page up, uh, those kinds of things. Home button. Uh, but now that I've gotten used to some of the shortcuts, I want to say that this keyboard is outstanding. The Apple keyboard on this computer is wonderful. Also you notice how large that trackpad is. I'm not a trackpad fan, but it's just an enormous trackpad. And you do the gestures, two fingers for scrolling, um, left and right, three fingers, if you want to use our back and forward like in a browser they'll go back and forward on your browsing history four fingers if you're wanting to uh, uh, switch to a different application so let's say if we had um, if we had uh, down here dictionary and I've got Yammer open we'll open up iChat real quick and uh, iPhoto you open those up, see now iPhoto's covering it, hit for, and you can switch to one of the other applications. There's other things. Uh, I've set the uh, corners of my screens as hot spots so I can change to bring up um, expose and that kind of thing. But uh, anyway, the, the trackpad is just enormous, it works very well, very sensitive. I'm not a trackpad fan, in fact, I, I really just don't like using them at all. But if you have to use one, this is a really good trackpad. 
Now, looking at the ports on the side, it's got a, U, a, a SD card port, and I've used that quite a bit. It has USB, and of course here's the display port. Unfortunately, if you uh, are used to having a Windows computer that has normal connectors, you know, that you connect to it, this doesn't have it. You have to get one of these. That bit me. Last week I was doing a presentation at a place, at a meeting, and... Um, didn't have one of these, had to go and buy one real quick in order to be able to hook it up to the projector. On the other side, you know, you have your other dis port, dis other USB port, headphone jack, the sound quality on this is very good, and then you have the um, uh, power connector. Now one of the things, you open it up and um, as you you know, see, it's very light, very easy to carry around. I just leave it in a sleeve, use that along with the Magic Mouse, which I've also done a review of, and uh, makes it very easy to use. As I mentioned, the sound, you don't see any speakers. You know, where are the speakers on this thing? Well, the speakers are hidden behind the case, and you'd think that for that reason, you'd think that uh, you'd have a real problem with sound. But here let's pull up this uh, Magic Mouse video and I don't know if you'll be able to tell it. In spite of the fact that it doesn't have any noticeable speakers, they're there and they actually have really good sound quality. Of course the headphones have good quality as well. So, sort of running down this review, I would say the Things that uh, stand out, of course, battery power, the great keyboard, very large trackpad, uh, the beautiful display, uh, sound quality is excellent, and in spite of the size, which it's really small, it actually is also fairly hefty. I mean, not, not heavy, but hefty. I mean, it just feels like it's got good, solid quality when you hold it. There's not bending in it, and um, it just feels like it's sturdy despite the, the, the size of it. I've heard people say that the old MacBook Air was kind of cheap feeling and um, they didn't like that. Notice in the commercial it, on TV, if you've seen it, it just lifts up real easily like that. <laughs> Not this one. The hinges are too tight on it uh, and so I have to kind of work to get it open. And I can't remember if I mentioned it to you yet or not, but uh, look at that, the shape there. That is very sharp. And when I use the trackpad, I kind of rest my thumb right there. That's my habit, and kind of like this. And uh, it actually has annoyed my thumb just a little bit. So that's kind of an annoyance uh, to me. And then the fact that it only has 128 gigabytes of storage, even if you go up to the 256, if you can afford it, definitely get it. Uh, the limited storage has been a bit of a cramp uh, to me, but one of the things I've done is I went ahead and got an external one terabyte hard drive. I got this at Best Buy for only a hundred dollars. It's slow, not very fast. I, don't, I think that's more because of the drive and not the computer. Uh, but that's where I'm storing things like uh, my music and movies and stuff in iTunes. I'm also going to export most of my documents to it. And uh, pictures, once I'm done with them, uh, I'll probably put them on here as a backup. and uh, Not a backup, but rather for storage, and then I'll back them up uh, online somewhere. And so that's uh, how I've been handling the storage issue. So, you know, you unfortunately have to add some cost to it. People have talked about getting a mobile me. That might be a good way of using iDisk. I don't have that yet. Uh, I don't know if I'll get it or not. But uh, my personal opinion is this is a win. I love this thing. Uh, it's become my primary computer. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I'm excited it's brand new. Uh, it's so mobile that uh, I've actually used my iPad less since getting it. Again, that may just because maybe just because uh, it's new to me and I'm you know playing with the new toy. Um, once uh, the iPad gets updated to iOS 4.2, that might go back to using it a lot more. But I'm pretty satisfied, pretty pleased with it, and I think you would be too. I think anybody would like this computer. If you're a Windows user wanting to switch, this might be a good way to get into a MacBook. Uh, they're a little bit less expensive, not entirely less, so you can get a MacBook uh, an ordinary MacBook for $999. This one uh, costs a few hundred dollars more than that because it's the 13.3 inch and it has more um, hard drive space and memory than, than the other one. 
But uh, it's, it's doing great for me, and so I'm really happy with it. Uh, this has been Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com with the new MacBook Air. Thanks for watching.